Hi everyone, welcome back to my latest video. Now today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we're going to look at um, doing snooker drills which can help you to learn uh, how to make better breaks or do what the snooker players do in real life and a couple of key drills on that. So what you do is you go to quick play go to trick shot setup shot now that sometimes is to the left far left I always pick hard times in snooker just simply because I like the lighting on the snooker on hard times. It's up to you. It's a preference. Make sure your table's on tournament setup. Click OK. Now you have the tracking lines, but don't worry about that. We now have to load the shot that we want to play. So we go exit, uh, escape, sorry. Load save game. Click on the line up. Now you won't have this necessarily. If you want me to send it to you, I can. Or you can set it up yourself. Practice mode. Make sure you press that. If you don't, you'll have to respot each ball and there'll be no break recorded. Easy to forget. If you do forget, just go and open it up again. Um, and it means that it's going to play like a normal break and the uh, colours will be respotted. Click load and you get this nice setup if you've set it up this way. Now, obviously, any any shot you've set up will be reminded so you can put reds in a specific place, blah, blah, blah. You move the white, click T to get rid of the lines and then you just start to play. And you'll notice that, providing I don't miss an easy shot, player one has one point. And if you've done it correctly, but when you pop the black, as if by magic, it's respotted. So you don't have to worry about respotting, which is a, a great little trick. And it makes it you can enjoy potting a nice uh, lineup drill. And you all, you know, just have to keep in line. <clears throat> the biggest challenge here of course is to get a, a 147 try not to do that because you'll end up married up against the balls you don't have to worry too much about position it's very much a sort of a potting drill I think um, but it can be it can be a challenge it can be frustrating because quite often you know you can suddenly be in the middle of a break and then do that <laughs> which is really bad um, okay so I'm not really concentrating but anyway Okay, so we're going to quit match there, come out, go back into trick shot, setup shot, and we end, you always end up back here with the tracking lines on, so don't worry about that. Now you want to click escape, go to load, save game, and do what's called the T drill. Now, this is a very, very popular snooker drill. These two are very, very popular drills. And when you load it up, you'll recognize it, T drill. Why is it called a T drill? Mm, if you're thinking that, you're not that clever. It looks like a T. And you can also do it where, for example... Um, I take the tram lines off. Uh, the balls can be set up in a V. So, for example, instead of them being in this line, they'll be in a line up here. It's so like a V drill or a Y drill, I guess, is more accurate. Or you can even set it up where the, the reds are just in a line like that towards the black and then going in that direction. <clears throat> so there's plenty of different options you can use. But the thing about the what people like about the, the T drill, if I just click A is that you have to um, navigate the, the balls at the top so it gets you to practice your pink thing. And you'll notice, what, 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 did, what didn't I do? What didn't I do? If I pot this ball, which I normally wouldn't because um, quit match, I didn't press practice mode. Dead easy to forget. It is so easy to forget. So you've got escape, load game, practice mode. Thank you. T drill, load. And then you, you always know you've done it right where you get the player one thing in the top corner. T to get rid of that. And then let's see if we can we can put a couple of balls. A to get the cue back if, if you move the ball. And you can always move the ball until you're in a break. It's only after that that you, the computer won't let you do it. Because it can't cheat, can we? I mean, it'd be nice if you could move the white. Um... So you're just working around the black. Pinched it slightly there. What they come for this red. <clears throat> now at some point what you can do is you can play the black and go up, up over for the, the reds around the pink. Now what I've done with the setup, and if you're setting this up, you've got to be careful. Make sure that the pink goes into both pockets. Yeah, see, so you've always got the option rather than putting that red too close and it'll go wrong. So here, for example, I might take this shot on. 
and we can practice our playing on the pink. Now I've obviously messed that up because I'm now going to hit that red. Um, if you can, you're best off not to hit reds. So I probably have to take that and then take a long red somewhere. Um, so I'm a little bit, I've botched it up a little bit here. Um, and here I'd probably take, take this red on and just slide through for the black. May have missed the red, damn it. So yeah, you, you get the idea. So you would kind of, for example, here you could take on this red and then you've got this pink and then you roll through. You know, you've just got to like, it's a really good drill in terms of practicing. And if you watch, um, there's a good video with Kyron Wilson, um, who uh, learns, does a few drills with Barry Stark, who's on YouTube. Um, now he, is very good at this drill obviously as a one of the top professionals in the world i missed that red again um and it's a really good drill to do so yeah you can get some nice breaks on this the t drill is harder than the than the lineup the lineup's probably the easiest uh so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to load the lineup back and we're going to have a go of it and i hope you enjoy watching me have a crack at that so here, here we go so here we are with the lovely lineup and i would expect that if you're a decent player on VP, you probably want to be getting centuries. For a beginner player, definitely look to get you know over 30, 40. The key thing is to try and keep an angle on the black, but don't get too close. I mean, that's like probably too close, really. And if you go too far there, just remember you've got other options. So here I can just roll through for the pink. And then I can use that to kind of stay involved. So again, A lot of it's just about discipline in terms of, of angles and position. <clears throat> I know that uh, people who are old yet, I might hit that a bit too hard. You don't want to get too close to reds. That looks like, are they, oh, isn't that perfect? No, it's not. It's too close. So I know players like, um, good players like Semi Pro who, who like to set challenges for himself. Um, he'll, for example, play uh where he only could use screw back or that he can't take a cushion he can do stuff like that but the main thing is initially is just getting used to making big breaks because one thing that can happen and we've all done it is you get to a high break and you start to worry you think oh I'm, this is a great break but the more you make big breaks the less you worry about being in the middle of one you just pop the balls and you get to a point where you feel like yeah i'm going to get all these um so don't feel don't worry about using the blue and um, that's a shocking shot. So I'm now going to have to go up and use the yellow. It's absolutely horrific. Uh, didn't want to do that at all. Rescued it well, but I'm pretty upset with that one. That's the one of the biggest dangers you can have is um, is not getting good position on the colour. Now, one thing you can do if you if you want to be clever and it's a good idea. Um, is to leave a red down by the black because that then gives you the option to if you mess up up here I mean you really shouldn't because there's so many reds to, to play for uh, but if, if you did make a mistake you could you could go and use that red at the bottom so that's like a nice little bit of insurance for you and like I say I'm on a 70 break here I'm really not even worried about the that number I'm literally again that's a poor shot don't want to be moving the white round. I prefer stuns to like follow throughs. Even though I'm good at follow throughs, um, I've now got myself into a little bit of trouble here. So I'm going to have to take maybe a long one, because that's probably the best position. And I've, I've got it and I've played a good shot to get back in shape. But again, that one was very, very missable. So I have to be careful. Now here, it's probably better to play back for the blue. I always play the pink. I think I might have to play the pink now. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna play the pink, but with a lot of sides. So it's a little bit, a little bit dangerous. That's not the best, to be fair. So I'm gonna play this shot here and hope I don't. Well, I've got the, I didn't mean to hit the red uh, like that. So if I've got an angle on the blue, uh, the question is, does that red go in the side? 
it does so i can play i'm quite lucky in fact that i can play this brown gotta be a bit careful that i don't go in off so we're just gonna what i do there is i try and aim just to hit the cushion and then here i'm just going straight into the pocket but trying not to yeah pinched it a little bit and i can use the pink to go for the colors So that was the century. I did want to set myself up a colours drill only, but to be honest, it might be helpful for you to do that, to get used to putting the colours in order, but it doesn't really have much value for me. Hit that too hard. I always end up on the wrong side of the blue. I mean, it's not hard to, to, to sort of rescue yourself, but it's frustrating to keep doing it over and over. Cool. So 129, in fact, that was my highest ever break in real life on this lineup, so that just shows you how much you can kind of move around with it. But I hope you enjoyed that, guys, and I'll see you again in a future video. Thanks for watching.